If you're watching this right now, you're probably trying to get a bunch of wins in parallel TCGs ranked mode. You're probably grinding some kind of event or trying to get high ranks in the leaderboard. For example, right now there's a referral event and you need to get 25 wins to unlock an invite. Well, I just grinded that event over the weekend and with this deck, I got a 75% win rate. Absolutely phenomenal. I am confident this deck is not only good right now, but will remain very competitive until the next expansion comes out. Right now, we're just in the base set, so we'll see what happens. If you play this deck reasonably well, I think you can expect to get a 60% win rate or better. It's just that strong, especially if people keep playing a lot of aggro. Now, I'd rather keep this deck secret, but as a true content creator, I'm just going to reveal all my secrets and put myself at a disadvantage. So if you appreciate that, then please make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. So a few strategic notes before we go through the cards. The meta is very aggressive right now. Most people in the ranked queue are playing very, very aggressive decks. Most of what you're going to queue up into at the time that I'm recording this are aggro Markolian and aggro earthen decks. However, aggro is not the only option. In fact, card games like this have a rock, paper, scissors thing going on. You know, rock beats scissors, scissors beats paper, paper beats rock. But in these games, it's aggro beats control, control beats mid-range, and mid-range beats aggro. So aggro decks are the ones that you're playing against right now. They hit you in the face, they try to kill you as fast as they can. Control decks are kind of the opposite. They're comfortable going as slow as possible, setting up some huge end game where they just have crazy powerful things that you can't deal with. Midrange is, as you'd expect, in the middle. It's got some value, but what midrange wants to do is it wants to set up a strong board and it wants to kill the opponent's creatures on the board and just really take over. Then you're going to hit them in the face and kill them pretty quickly. You're not waiting until the game goes forever because you're not confident you can always win that super late game thing, but you are giving yourself some time to set up some big boys and then hit them in the face. It's my favorite way to play. And since the meta is very aggro and since midrange beats aggro, right now is an amazing time to play midrange deck. I don't even think Irvin is the only one. It's just the first one that I've built. I think mid-range in any class is likely to be somewhat interesting and it's just not being done very much, which is good because you can play it and if you do it, maybe you can get an advantage like I have. It's a great feeling to play a deck that is good against the meta. It's an amazing feeling. So just one more thing before we look at the cards, the matchups. This deck is heavily favored against Cathari, Markolian, and Aggro Earthen. Um, really good Markolian players can be a lot tougher. If you queue up against Quinto when he's playing Markolian, it's going to be tough. I've only beaten him once. But in most matchups, you will have an advantage realistically. Agincourt is a 50-50 matchup, but that's only if you play it really well. You're going to have to understand what the opponent's threats are, play around those threats, and hit him in the face fast enough that they can't set up anything too big. It's not an easy matchup, but Agincourt is a doable 50-50 if you can figure it out. And then Shroud is by far your worst matchup. That's usually the case for Earthen. It's even more so for mid-range because your best strategy against Shroud is to hit them as fast as possible and just go really wide. Luckily, our mid-range deck is still pretty early game oriented. It can definitely shift into an aggro style. Uh, against Shroud, you just want to bank your Virulent Spores and bank your upgrade cards like, uh, you know, like the Fungi and like the Shield, the Malachite Shield. You're going to throw all those in the bank and just play all your creatures and really try to hit them in the face for the most part. Keep in mind, a 30 to 40% win rate against Shroud trying your hardest is a lot better than a 0% molding and conceding on turn 2 kind of situation so you should still try to win do your best a lot of times we feel like it's unwinnable when it's really a 35 percent and you know hey i mean one out of three odds is still pretty good you should still play for the win in my opinion if you're really trying to get those wins all right let's look at some key cards so first up permea conduit the first card we're going to look at it's recently been buffed so now it has the shielded keyword which just makes it insane yes it's a one cost one one but the way it actually works is it spends all of your remaining energy and it's that much attack and power. So if you have three energy, it's a three, three. If you have six energy, it's a six, six. What makes this card so good is its flexibility. You'll occasionally play it on turn one, but you're hoping to play it on turn two after playing a steward. So it gets three energy and then it's a three, three, or you play it in the late game as a seven, seven and eight, eight. 
And while your opponents will remove this sometimes using Black Market Fixer, I'm actually seeing more and more players get greedy and stop running as many fixers. So there's less of those going around. The shield blocks, you know, uh, banishing from Erasure or Annihilate trying to destroy it. The shield defends it from some stuff. And these are really sticky, especially because this list runs at least nine strong cards below three, even more maybe. So like, they're not going to have enough fixers to get everything. Amazing, amazing card. Um, and then in a similar line, we got the two drop, Student of Shoshana. It's a two, two for two. After you play a unit, this unit gains plus one, plus one, and heal yourself for one. This used to be plus zero, plus one. They buffed it to plus one, plus one, which took it from a little bit underrated and very good to just being an insanely good card that everyone knows about. This is cracked. A lot of times your opponent is going to remove it before it gets stronger, but that's because you're forcing them to use removal as fast as they can. If they fail to remove it, this can ramp up and get a ridiculous amount of value. And since you have three of these and three of those Permea Conduits and some other stuff, they're not going to have enough black market fixers. Now this is going to lose to stuff like, or it's going to die to stuff like Annihilate, but that's okay. Because again, you're making them use up all their removal. They're not going to have enough, especially not in this aggro meta. And while we're talking about two drops, a quick note about Mizra Loyalist. I think this is the most overrated card in the Earthen class. It can be amazing sometimes, but you're, uh, you know, you're really depending on your opponent to not have answers or to just to straight up misplay. I think against strong opponents and strong decks, this card just doesn't get value very often. It's very slow to become a threat. And, uh, you know, it's just not that good. I really don't think it gets powerful enough, fast enough to do what it needs to do in this deck. And that's why I'm not running it. I'm open to reevaluating if I'm wrong. I just don't think it's a good card. I think it's overrated right now. My hot take on Mizra Loyalist. You'll notice I've never put Loyalist in any of my deck lists. I've tried it off stream. I've tried it off video. I've never actually included it in the final version of anything. Um, okay, the number one legendary that you need in Earthen, if you can possibly craft anything or hopefully just pull it out of a pack, this is it. Soleia, Disciple of Gafar. At the end of your turn, if no combat damage was dealt this turn, so you didn't attack, you may pick a friendly unit to attack an enemy unit of your choice, and your unit gains armed and evasive for this attack. Armed means that if your unit kills their unit, you take no damage back. It's first strike, if you think about magic terminology. And evasive means their defenders can't do anything. Soleia is an insane value card against decks that are playing more value, like other mid-range decks. This card can solo games if they can't kill it quickly, it will just absolutely snowball out of control in terms of value. And if you're able to defend this with your defenders, which you often are, your opponent has a hard time removing it. It's got four health, so they need at least, you know, two PS8 launchers or something. Um, it's a three energy card. It can't get hit by Black Market Fixer. A lot of times, especially with these greedy aggro decks running around the base set, they're not going to have removal for this, and it can win you games. Sometimes you play this on turn two, and it's just kind of GG, uh, which is crazy. Now, a lot of times it's not that easy, but when it is, whew, it feels good. This is the number one legendary in the Earthen class. It's much better than anything else, better than Tane, better than Gaia. Craft this as your first legendary. Uh, there's really no substitute, but you could run like a doctor's assistant or something instead if you don't have it, because you need to put something there. But yeah, ideally, there's really no substitute for Soleia. Whereas you can easily get away with not running Gaia's Call. I would go so far as to encourage you, do not craft Gaia's Call. It, it can get you a win now and then, and it's a very fun card. I think it might be a good inclusion in the deck, but it's not worth crafting. There are many other cards, including neutral universal cards, like Battle Probe or Lord Harf. Uh, I would craft before this, you know, but especially just Soleia. Always craft Soleia. Always. Verulent Spores. This is the best AoE, at least for its mana cost. Like, the strongest AoE spell, the strongest, like, board removal spell in the whole game, I think. All units gain decay. You will need this to come back and win games that are otherwise unwinnable if the opponent gets a fast and strong start with Marcolian or with Cathari. Right now, Cathari's pretty weak, but it's going to come back eventually. So, against... Marcolian aggro, Cathari aggro, aggro earthen, or mirror matches. 
where they get the uh, first turn tempo advantage. Spores is your get out of jail free card. I used to think this card would be maybe too slow because you'd play it and then you'd have to like wait till next turn. But once you get to five or six energy, you can play Spores, DK all of their units, which means they're all taking damage on their turn. And then you can play more units afterwards that don't have decay. So you can really get a tempo swing. Spores is goaded. You need at least one, ideally two of these in the deck. You could even run three. Um, I honestly only had two when I built the deck, I think. I have three now, so I don't know. I should try running three and see. Uh, I tried running tree. I don't like it. It's way too slow for a mid-range deck. Maybe in a full control, extremely slow Shoshana deck one day, this will work. I just don't like this. And if people start playing Black Market Smuggler, they can just steal it. I'm not a fan of the tree. The more I played it, the less I liked it. But speaking of Black Market Smuggler, that is the next one. I don't even want to mention this. I, like, considered not even talking about it and just really underplaying it, downplaying it. Truth is, though, I'll say it because, again, content creation, like and subscribe, giving up all my secrets. I think Relic Removal is underrated right now. Uh, people want to minimize it because it doesn't fit into the hyper-aggressive hitting face plan. People run like one Saboteur at most or one EMP. But uh, I think this card feels amazing whenever I play it. There's not a lot of six energy cards in the game. 4-4 four, four is actually a pretty important stat line. I find that 4-4 four, four is substantially better than 3-4 three, or 3-3 three, three, and a little bit better than 4-3. Like It's just 4-4 four, four is a good stat line in the base set. So many things cap out at three health and three attack. Same reason I think that the Interceptor, TE4 Interceptor, is great. It does three damage to a unit on the board, and there's just not a lot of stuff above three unless it's like premium late game drops. So the 4-4 four, four is good, and stealing a Relic can be a game-winning thing. You don't get it that often, and that's okay because you bank it early and you play it as a 4-4 four, four in the later game when you're just trying to keep your value up. It's okay. It's okay when it's not like getting its muster value. When you steal a good relic, that can single-handedly win you the game. Your opponent often doesn't have removal, and they never steal it back. Because like I said, no one's running it, and I don't want to talk about it anymore. I've already talked about it enough. I didn't want to do it, but I told you, so you should be grateful. I don't want to talk about it anymore. It's my secret. My secret. I put it deep in the video. No one will notice. Lastly, one more card. I mean, there's more cards in the deck. We're not going to go through every card in the deck. We're going through the highlights, because there's going to be a lot of repeat cards, and there's some stuff like... Uh, like, Flux, why are you running one Artifact Appraiser? I just needed another one drop. The one, two stat line is good. Like, not everything is super interesting. And some of these cards you could play around with, you know. I will briefly mention, actually, one more before we get to Chem Crazed. Cleanse the Earth. You run one of these, and it's just amazing. Because, as you probably know, but some people might not know this, your opponent's Paragon, when they play it to the board, is a token. It's not a card which means if you put it in the opponent's hand, it simply gets destroyed. It doesn't even go to the waste. It just disappears. And so you run one of these, you save it, and you never play it except to remove the opponent's Paragon. And you're just like, bye-bye Brand, bye-bye the opponent's Gafar, bye-bye Lemieux from the Marcolian deck, which is okay. Bye-bye Arak, like whatever you're getting rid of, or even one of the tokens from Joggernaut Workshop, etc., etc. I always... Mulligan slash bank this against New Dawn Shroud because they shouldn't really give you a chance to use it. But in most other cases, that's really good. But the last one I wanted to mainly mention is Chem Crazed Bruiser. The muster is that it gains three counters. It's an 8-7 for seven. And if it would take damage, you remove one of those counters instead. Once it has no counters, you destroy it. It's not that good in a lot of games, but occasionally you need a big stats, high energy creature. There are so few options. I think this is a lot better than the other universal seven drop, the 10-6 stat line. Um, that card is interesting, but it just dies a little too easily. This, the three counters can work against it, but it can also work in its favor. If you trade this into something that's like six health and 10 attack, you can just kill it and keep your bruiser alive. There's a lot I could say about this card that's not like necessary for this video, but I think it's good to have the three bruisers. I've had them in the deck and out of the deck a few times, and you just bank it if you don't need it. You bank it if it's in the early game. Anytime I have this, my opening hand, it goes straight to the bank. And if you do have Gaia's Call, even though you really don't need it, if this isn't needed, it is nice that you can bank the Bruisers early, and then in the event of a Gaia's Call, if it actually happens, the Bruisers will give you huge damage. So, I like these. I, I honestly just don't have Tain, but if you do have Tain, 
the big, I think, 9-12 legendary earthen behemoth, you know, just giant creature. You can replace one bruiser with him. I just don't. I, I'm going to craft him soon-ish, but I don't have him yet. Okay, no deck guide video thing is complete without a highlight match. So let's jump into the ranked queue. I'm currently 23rd on the leaderboard, which is actually pretty good. So we might get a tough match, but let's see if we can just get a win real quick. I'm going to need to move my camera. It's going to need to go somewhere about here. Uh, let's see what we can do. Let's see if we can get a win on the first try, because I'm, I'm hungry and I want to go eat lunch. Okay, so this can be a tough matchup against the uh, Joggernaut Workshop Augencore, but we should be okay. Let's see if we can get a win here. I told you guys, Augencore is a 50-50 if you play it well. I do think Joggernaut Workshop might be a bit weaker than a rock, but it can still be tough. I think the audio is off. Let me try to crank that up for you guys. Yeah. Some audio going at least a little bit. And then my mulligan phase, I'm pretty much sending anything back above two, although I might keep an Axeman. Nah, here I'm going to send back pretty much everything except the one and the two drop. Pretty easy strategy. Just If it's above two, toss it back. Not a bad hand. We'll use Cleanse the Earth when they get their first Joggernaut, and it'll just get destroyed because it's going to be a token. They get a lot of value at the workshop. I've drawn Solea early, though, which means we could get huge value. The question is, what do we bank on turn one? Um, I kind of need to bank the hired gun, as sad as it is, because it's a really cool video card. We got to bank it, though. I'm trying to get the win on the first try. I'm actually going to hold back the conduit. We got two of our one drops. We didn't get the best one, which is the steward. You're really just hoping for a steward into an axeman or a steward into a solea, like as much as possible. And steward of the garden gives you the one energy ramp. Uh, which I, I might have forgotten to focus on that. I, I didn't, like, point it out in the card review, which I probably should have, but I assume a lot of you guys have seen it. If it's not your first Earthen deck, you know about Steward of the Garden. And so they gave it a Ocular Implant. They drew a card. They hit me in the face. Not so bad. The Appraiser, even if you don't run Relics, or, like, we only run Gaia's Call, it's still nice because it's just the only 1-2-1 one, one drop in the Universal Pool. That I'm aware of, so I just run it for the stat line. In this case, I can kill them and we stay alive with the appraiser. It's a little thing, but little things add up. I'm usually banking the formidable presence, aka seeds. Um, I'm banking the seeds early in the game because I just don't need them yet. Uh, I never ever use formidable presence on turn four or turn five because it just ends up killing your tempo the turn after when you have less energy. Um, oh, the sound effects are a little bit loud now, aren't they? Let me turn him down again and try to find a mid-range. Hopefully that wasn't too crazy. Um, we're off to a pretty good start, but it's tough against the Joggernaut Workshop because they're going to get a lot of value. Automation Expert is an interesting card. This is another one that's a token. We could kill it by bouncing it with Cleanse the Earth. We drew the second Formidable Presence. Might not want to bank it. I could bank Annihilate, or I could bank one of the Conduits, but I'll be honest, man, I never want to bank a Conduit. They have so much shielded in Augencore that I'm often banking Annihilate because it just doesn't matter when they have shielded. And then this is a little bit tricky. I want to use Solea, but it's too bad they have... Uh... Oh, no, yeah, this is going to ramp. We can use Solea. So basically, as long as we don't attack, then Solea gives us a free attack at the end of turn with Armed. So I play Solea. Our student of Shoshana buffs to 3-3. I know it's hard to see the stats. I'm sure they're going to improve the UI. It's uh, a well-known thing. And I could just attack this directly and kill both of them. But then my Shoshana takes some damage. The other option is to uh, use a Solea effect. I actually am changing my mind. I'm going to kill them directly. Because they're probably going to kill our student either way using their Joggernaut. So let's... We're getting a little bit in the weeds. We ended up not using the Solea effect. But if I'd wanted to... It would have been pretty good. I, just, I choose to kill them both. I don't know. I could have gone either way. As you can see, even for me, I have to kind of think about it. And sometimes I'm reasoning out the turn. And then I have to kind of jump to my final conclusion. Okay, this is a very good spot. So let's see what Joggernaut. I'm guessing that Joggernaut is going to be Artillery Joggernaut. No, they went Defense Joggernaut. So Artillery Joggernaut would have done some damage to Student probably and killed it. Don't worry about the Joggernauts if you're not familiar with them. I don't want to bog down the video trying to explain every little thing. 
I'm going to bank the second seeds. Some of y'all might think I'm crazy, but seeds is really more of a finisher. And right now I'm concerned with taking over the board. I'd rather have spores as a just in case get out of jail free card. I'm going to bank the, uh, I'm going to bank it. I'm going to bank those seeds. And then we're going to use cleanse the earth and just get rid of their defense juggernaut. Careful with the order because it kind of shows the cards like opposite where they are on the board when they pull them up. So don't go too fast on that. Now that doesn't count as damage, so Solea's effect is still active. And then we're going to play a 2-2 Conduit. Uh, did I bank? Yeah, I banked the seeds again. We're going to play a 2-2 Conduit. Defender can defend both my student and my Solea. And then here we will... I can use Solea and kill one of these and hit him in the face for four damage, or I can just pass and get a free kill. Let's take a free kill and show off the Solea effect. So I didn't do combat damage. Now I can choose either of my units. Let's choose student. It's a 4-2. If it takes damage, it dies. But because it gets the armed effect, which is basically first strike, we kill their officer and it dies, and then it doesn't get to attack back. It would only attack back if it didn't die. Now we do draw Gaia's Call. And this could be useful against Ogincor. We just only have uh, the one creature in our void right now, so... It might not end up working out. We'll see. They're able to clear my defender pretty easy. And I'm keeping an eye on their, their uh, counter. I'm sorry I'm a little bit off-center. That might be annoying to some of y'all. I should have probably figured out my camera position by like running an AI match first. I'll do that for the next video here. Let's fix it. I'm kind of learning the flow for a uh, parallel video. I've done a million Gods Unchained videos. Set up some scenes and stuff. Okay, so they're shielded. They have a kill switch, and this is a big deal. When this unit dies they get to kill one of my units but we still need to take care of this i drew the third seeds which is crazy we're not going to send it back we'll hold on to that i might play gaffar and then kill security officer and just kind of like see if they take the bait otherwise we just let them kill i mean they they're going to kill solea or the student all right let's keep this simple i think we're going to give up the spores i'm giving up my defensive options slowly I realistically should have banked Gaia's Call, but I'm being a little greedy and holding on to it. It'd make for a cool match if we did get Gaia's Call to work. Although, uh... Oh, I, I, I should have attacked face first. I'm so bad. Okay, they're going to kill something, and I'm not going to get to attack face with it. I guess that's, that's a bit of a mistake there, yeah. But, okay, they killed the student. I missed some face damage. You can laugh at me in the comments. That's okay. I make mistakes all the time, especially when I'm trying to explain everything for a video. I'm not embarrassed. If you watch the live stream, link in the description, over on Twitch and occasionally on Kick, uh, you'll see that it's it's it just happens. It's okay. With that said, they're not getting a Joggernaut this turn, but next turn they are. And they're juicing this up with another kill switch. Now this guy has Salvage 1. So we need to kill it before they play any other units. Luckily, they haven't played any more units yet. Salvage lets it re-equip and upgrade to something else when it dies. If they get multiple kill switch value, we are, we are very sad. We've already seen they have a, a feeling of wanting to zap the student. So let's see if they do it again, Loki. No and uh, they do have Defender, which is kind of annoying. I want to hit face for some damage. We're going to bank the steward, and uh, we can play Gaffar. I mean, Gaffar is pretty good bait. Gaffar is pretty good bait. Let's try it, because then they're going to want to remove it with the kill switch. I'm always trying to bait my opponents into uh, different things. Uh, okay. I don't really want to, like... I don't know if I should use Soleil as effect. We kind of want to hit them in the face a bit. Let's try hitting them in the face for three. They could defend right here. And they do. Who are they going to kill? Is it Solea this time? The thing is, in this matchup, we're not using Solea much. And notice how they killed Gaffar. They took the bait. I know I'm saying a lot of stuff. One of the things I said is I, I was playing Gaffar in the hopes that they would maybe be baited into removing him. That's exactly what happened. They didn't get the salvage value. I'm always double-checking my bank. And okay, like, yep. I banked the steward of the garden because in the late game, we don't need it. Although it's not terrible. It's not terrible, but it's usually a candidate for banking. I'm holding the third formidable presence because we've drawn all of them this game. They're using Salvager. I mean, I, I wish I had a change of heart here because this is where we want to use Pacifist. I don't think we're even running change of heart, are we? I forget. I've, I've, it's been in and out of the deck. 
Isn't there like one of them in this list? I honestly forget. Gotta look up my own guide. Uh, but it's okay. Uh, let's focus in here. So we draw Axemen. This is an example of where we can bank the Smuggler. We're not playing Gaia's Call, really. We're too focused on trying to win the board. They use the Artillery Joggernaut, finally. They got a Defender. They got Kill Switch, and it's got Salvage. So they're really setting up a lot of their good stuff. We definitely want to play Axemen, I think. I think... Is there any chance I just play Gaia's Call here and do a little switcheroo? Probably not. We need to keep up on the board. What I want to do is get rid of the Salvager. There's a chance I would use Seeds here just as a removal thing. Let me see. If I use Seeds, I can kill the 2-3, kill the 1-1, one, one, kill the Salvager. We're not quite killing the Joggernaut, though. Shit. Okay, maybe we just play... Here, I think we're going to... I just bank Gaia's Call. I'm not ready to give up on the Gaia's Call yet. Maybe I should, but I'm not ready. Let's do all this. And I think we're just going to attack. Oh, it's so bad. Nah, we'll, we'll use Soleil's effect. We're not going to use it on the uh, Salvager. We're going to just kill their Defender. I mean, the 2-5 is a little bit better to kill, but Defender is stronger than the 2 health of stats, I think. I'm still banking. I'm still drawing cards. As you can see, they're getting a lot of value from Joggernauts, but the Workshop is a little bit less impactful over time. Hmm, do I let them trade into this? No, I definitely defend, because they're going to use the Kill Switch to kill the Conduit for sure. They're going to kill our 7-7 seven, seven Defender, so we'll defend. Now they salvage it to something else, unfortunately. But they only have three cards in hand. I have four cards before drawing, so five after I draw. This time, they're going to kill Soleil. So, we're even on the board. I'm developing a slight card advantage, and I will have time to play Gaia's Call. Um, damn, Gunslinger is so good. One damage to finish off my other unit. We're holding on to the seeds. We didn't waste them. I thought about playing them. Didn't waste them. And the match continues. Yep. I think we can win this one. This will be a good one because it shows you it's not an easy win. I told y'all Agincourt was difficult. I'd like to win this one just to sort of show it off. Man, they still have Kill Switch. Did they play another one from their hand? Yeah, they've drawn all three Kill Switches. That's their best scenario. Um, but they don't have Salvage. So here's what we do. Here's what we do. I think we're going to bank the Mushrooms, the Fungi. So I can play a 5 and then a 3. Here's what we do. I mean, the Fungi is good. Honestly, Fungi is like, if I had to cut a card, it's probably one of the first ones on the block. It's good, but in very specific situations, it kind of smooths out the curve. I'm like, you know, I think for budget decks, I know a lot of y'all are not going to have every card for this deck. Like, Fungi is absolutely perfect. Anyway, the third kill switch is in the waste. They could still salvage it back. They've been pretty lucky. If it happens, there's not a ton I can do except keep playing. Um, but the Axeman gets itself up to 6-6. Six, six. We're continuing to get some extra draws. This is nice. Finally, my first fixer. I'm running three of them. Um, and they just upgraded to the armed. Yep, this is cutting edge. Plus one attack and armed. Bionic Tweaker is going to probably give salvage to this guy, I'm guessing. Yep. That's okay. We can deal with the armed card. This is where Fixer comes into play. They have conceded... I wish they'd played a little longer, but they knew their time was up. I've outvalued them, and I wish we had a few more turns to show how it was going to go, but that's about as early a concede as I would expect. Like, that's... They're losing hope. They could have tried to salvage back, uh, or they could have tried to get some more kill switches back out of the waste. But that was an awesome match, demonstrating the, exactly how mid-range works. We're playing a little bit of the longer game. And against Agincourt, it can go a bit extra long. It depends on the deck. There's so much I could say. But that match is a great example of that Agincourt lineup. A lot of your matchups against Agro Earthen and Ag uh, Agro Marcolian are going to be like that, except a lot easier. <laughs> you know? Your opponent's going to go a little faster, but as long as you can keep ahead of them, you'll be pretty good. Uh, and I gained a position. Now I'm 22nd place. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Flux signing out.